Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. You can find us all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast. We are the only ones, so you'll find us. If you're a big fan of the show, you can also support us on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. As always, a big thank you to our patrons. You guys are awesome. You make the show that much easier to do, and I hope you know that we appreciate you because we truly, truly do. Y'all are generous and supportive, and it does mean the world. So big thank you to our patrons if you've considered it. You know, just just a buck a month helps. It really does. So uh, we do appreciate all y'all out there. It's an option if you want it. We're also part of the Real Fans Podcast Network. You can check out all those shows at rf4rm.com. And finally, as always, I'm your bat host, Andy DiGenova. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, Letterboxd. Yeah, it's always just my name, Andy DiGenova. Now it's a special day. We said it's, it's, it's well, as we're recording, it's about to be a special day. If you're listening to this when it's published, it is a special day. And if you procrastinated it used to be a special day but regardless we're celebrating 35 years of batman we already started a little bit of a celebration a couple episodes ago and we talked about great moments with justin from epic film guys but now we're going to talk a little bit more about just favorite things about batmania that all came out of this film that we love so much now that it's 35 years old and it's such a special day and such a special occasion that i've got both of the OGs with me today. It hasn't happened in a long, long time, and I'm so excited about it. So first of all, he's back. You know him. You love him. He's staying up late just for you, just to make a little podcasting magic with us tonight. It's Jamie Drewley. Hi, Jamie. I better be getting paid overtime for staying up this late. That's all you I'm are, saying. I'm paying you double time, okay? Ooh, double time. That's yep, yep. You're, what, you're worth it. two times zero? It, you know, math was never my thing, but you know, right. tri- triple time, triple. Well, all right, all right, triple time will work. We'll we'll figure out the math later. Spared no expense, but welcome back. We missed you. How you been? Uh, busy. Life is very very busy. And you have I'm you re- have two college graduate daughters. Or not high college. School graduate. High school. High school. That's what I meant. Ah, high school graduate I, daughters. The way the time is flying, they'll be graduating college next Sunday. So yeah, I. I I totally understand how that goes, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, huh. my son's a driver's ed. He's got his learner's permit. My daughter's graduated high school. They're moving out in like six ish weeks. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, huh. Things are crazy around here. Life is changing. Well, congrats to you. Congrats to Kimber and the girls. And, uh, I know you got a big, exciting graduation trip coming up. So that's exciting. Heck yeah. Much needed for everybody. Good. Anyway, well, glad you're you're here. Glad you're back. You know who else is back? Our our favorite cuddly koala. He's back. We made this. We managed to make it happen. We love him. Hey, Brendan, welcome back. Hello, gents. How are we? We're great. So it's excited. Been, it's been that long since we recorded together that Jamie had to remind me that we hate each other. I know, right? But now you remember, right? Yeah, he's an asshole. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, well, welcome back. It's exciting. Yeah, it's this, this, yeah. this may not happen again until another leap year. <laughs> or another 35th anniversary of something. Right. <laughs> well, um, good to have you back as well. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Yeah, it's exciting. Exciting. Well, because we are all, I, I think the last time we were all together, was it the 10th anniversary? <laughs> was it? Of this. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It was the last time the three of us were on the show together was our 10th anniversary. That was like February. Oh, so I think you made the 10th anniversary of this movie. I'm like, what? No, <laughs> no. Uh, like when we did our 10th anniversary episode in February, was that the last time all three of us were together? It might be. Possibly, yeah. It might be. I think it might have been. So anyway, that's my point. It's been a minute. And I have been sitting on something for all of us to enjoy together since then. And since we are all together, we need to enjoy it tonight because, again, who knows when we're going to do this again? Not for another year or two. I don't know. Um, So I've been sitting on this video. We have to do it next year because not to gray up anybody's hair prematurely, Batman Begins turns 20 next year. Oh, I know. (laughs) Okay. Great. Thanks for that. Um, All right. Which means Batman Forever is 30. Indeed. (laughs) Christ, we're getting old. 
So I'm sitting on this video. I've been sitting on it since our 10th anniversary episode a couple months ago. And this is from listener Richard Webster. And I watched it and I was like, no, I need us all to watch it together because it's super special just for us. All right. Yeah. So so I sent it to you guys open it up. And I want you to hit play when I count down. I'm going to do three, two, one, play, so we can all watch it together. Does everybody have it up and ready to hit play? Sure. Yep. This is a special anniversary message from Richard Webster. Here we go. Three, two, one, play. Hello, Andy, Jamie, Brendan, and all the Badcast crew. I wanted to take time out of my busy day of crime fighting. Master Wish Wayne, Alfred. why are there four Asian girls on your face? Um, <laughs> I'm investigating a new Chinese <laughs> gang, bang, uh, gang in Chinatown. <laughs> Shut that off real quick. <laughs> so congratulations on a remarkable 10 years of podcasting. You guys are the best. I hope you're here for another 10 more years. I listen every week, and I can't wait to hear the next episode. Oh, and can we get the review of the next episode of the Batman animated series? Come on, Brendan. I thought you were all over that. Fucking Australians. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wayne Batcast. Batman House. It wasn't born, Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. I saw the reflection before he said it. <laughs> I, I did not notice it until he said it. And I was like, oh my God. So, I mean, Richard went all out. I'm not going to post it to the page because it's not safe for work and I don't want to get reported. But um, he, he went all out. He's wearing the full costume and he actually superimposed image an image on his face that was coming from uh from his computer allegedly so anyway yeah i was like he went the extra mile and i wanted uh to make sure that you guys i wanted to hear you guys hear it for the first time that was fantastic hats that, off that was yes wonderful thank you for that <laughs> all right so richard if you're out there listening thank you so much for the message thanks for going all out Bonus points. That was awesome. <laughs> and I love it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just saving that forever. Uh, so very cool. We're still celebrating 10 years of Holy Batcast, I guess. Uh, but we are also celebrating 35 years of Batman, the movie from 1989. Before we get to that, though, I got to give a shout out, as always, to our pals over at Manscaped. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that Smooth Sack Summer is officially upon us. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bum. Thanks to our friends at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Get 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use the code BATSCAPED. Summertime and the trimming is easy. So, guys, it is summertime. It's a good time to up your grooming game, and Manscaped's got you covered no matter it is what you want to do. If you want to get the Performance Package 5.0, it's awesome. It gives you a little bit of everything. You get a good sampling of the products. Maybe you want to go a la carte. You just need a trimmer. You just want the face shaver. You just want some deodorant, whatever. All the stuff is great. We've been very, very happy with it. You've heard us talk about it before. Still true. Still use it every day. And so go to manscaped.com. Do a little perusing. And if you're going to make a purchase, all that we ask is you use that promo code BATSCAPED. BATSCAPED gives you 20% off and free shipping. And it allows you to continue to support our show here. And it really helps us out. So buy yourself something nice. Improve your grooming. Make yourself happy. Buy yourself something good. You're worth it. Save a little money. And then you're supporting Holy Batcast in the process, and that would be awesome. So check out all the good stuff they've got over at manscaped.com and just use that promo code BATSCAPED to save a little money, and we would love it if you would do that. So big thanks, and the summer is as good a time as any to do it. All right. Speaking of, I, I, I'm way overdue to make a new order myself, but that's neither here nor there. You got to um, buy in bulk, man. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's what you guys did. Hey, but, uh, Jamie, how's the ball deodorant going at the moment? Uh, it's working its magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the we're... That humidity. <laughs> it's, I, uh, it, the, the fact that it's doing its job as well as it is in the temperatures that we have had in Midwest America the last nine or so days, 
is a pretty solid testament to the quality of their product. Indeed, indeed. So this is a good time to really put it through its paces. Um, anyway, let's get to the subject at hand. I am planning on releasing this episode on June 23rd. Because on June 23rd of 1989, something magical happened. Batman was released in theaters. No, um, no, you're wrong. It was June 19th. No, it was not. That's when it premiered, wasn't it? That was the premiere, and that's also when Batman Returns was released. Don't get me started. I, I know that's a sore spot for you. That's why I had to say <laughs> Anyway, so hopefully... You got this on June 23rd. It's 35 years of Batman, and we're about to celebrate it here at Holy Batcast. So here we go. It's time to talk about 35 years of Batmania that coincided with Batman back in 1989. And you're probably wondering, like, what do you, how are you guys going to celebrate 35 years? You've already talked about the movie and, like, broken down the movie. You've done a commentary on the movie. And then I just did uh, <laughs> the episode a little while ago about favorite moments. So what we wanted to talk about here was, like, things related to the movie. Batmania, especially back in 1989, but just everything that has since come out of that movie over the past 35 years. Because I think that... It is safe to say that it is a movie that has found its place in film history and it's not going anywhere. And I think that's an amazing and magical thing. And it all started back in 1989. So we wanted to talk about all those things and then everything that went along with it, like toys and T-shirts and video games and whatever else, all the things, all the Batman 89 goodness that came out of this movie. So. We want to turn the clock back to 1989. And here's the thing. Like, I know Jamie and I have a lot of memories from when the movie came out back then. But Brendan, I don't know if you do. Because I remember you talked about remembering when Batman Returns was coming out and you couldn't go see it because it was too scary. But I don't know how much memory you have of the release of Batman 89. Here's the thing. I have a lot of memories of the release oh. of Batman 89. But it's, it's different because... 89 to me is when I was introduced to the character and that was through Batman 66. Mm. But the reason it was on television is because Batman was coming out. Right. Um, All Batman toys and merchandise and things that I were getting at that time were from the Batman movie because that's what was out at the time, you know? Um, So yeah, like, you know, I mean, I know we'll touch on them specifically, but like toys and books and um, costumes and all, all the paraphernalia and stuff. It, it was all Batman 89. Like, I, I mean, I posted a thing on Twitter just before we started recording of a, um, a photo of some of the toys I got for Christmas 89 that I still have um, and my birthday in, in February 1990. And I remember... Um, it's going to sound weird. like when we started talking about doing this episode, a memory that popped into my head and I hadn't thought of it in God knows how long random. They released Batman lollies over here. Um, I don't know what you would call them over there. Like kind of like, like jellies. Like to us, they'd just be lollies, but I think you might call them like a jelly style lolly or something. I'll, I could not find a photo of them. <laughs> no one here has said jelly style lolly. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, like a candy. Yeah. It's, Australians will know what I'm talking about, or, you know, non-Americans will know what I'm talking about, but uh, like a jube, um, but they were probably. What uh, words is he saying? Is, <laughs> is this English? A jube? Of, a jube? Types of, they're, they're types of lollies slash candy, um, but these were, they were in the shape of Batman. You bought, you bought them in a pack, like a packet of, I don't know, however many, um, but they were probably, oh, I'd say maybe you know, four or five inches tall, each one. Like, they were almost the size of an action figure, but, you know, um, and they were multiple colours and they were, like, these Batman lollies. And I just randomly thought of that the other day and it just took me back to being five. And we were on a road trip and mum bought a packet of these Batman lollies to, you know, to eat in the car. And, yeah, so I, yeah, long story short, I have a lot of memories of 89 um, because it's when I fell in love with the 
the you know the character and and everything it's where it all started for me as well but um it was kind of the movie adjacent like i didn't see the movie until the following year um on Mm -hmm. vhs when i was home really sick from school one day and i can't i was drifting in and out of sleep so i can't really remember it i didn't see it properly um until 1991 when it was on television and mum taped it and then i watched it properly at my grandparents house um and from there you know that's when i you know i would just watch the movie on repeat and it became a you know everything all right like how um is it like a lollipop? Is that what you no, mean? Like, like... <laughs> I'm, I'm so I can't picture these things that you're talking about. Obviously, it's a Batman candy, but I I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, well, cool. So do, do you remember when you knew there was a movie coming out or, or that a movie had just come out? Um, I'd been watching the TV show. And my first conscious memory i think now um there was a brand of i think you guys call them juice boxes um like i do i do know what a juice box is you put the straw yeah we call them poppers um what (laughs) are you kidding no i'm not you you call them poppers yeah do you know what you know what a, you know what a popper is here? It's a jalapeno stuffed with cream cheese or other cheese, and then breaded and deep fried. That's a popper. I think it's because you could like once you'd finish them, you could blow them up and stamp on them, and they'd pop. And I think that's how they got the name. I don't know. If they're called mm. poppers. I'm, that's just what they're called over here. Fascinating. Okay, yeah, I'm, we're I'm learning. learning. <laughs> so, I'm, we've been friends for so long, and yet you still teach me new things. <laughs> you only learned last night. <laughs> Jess is technically Canadian. Um, yeah, no idea. So, yeah, there was a brand of those, and a promotion they had was that within each, I think it was each six pack, um, there was a, a sticker, and I remember seeing some of these stickers and thinking why is Batman wearing black and why are his ears so long? Mm. And then I remember getting around the same time the it was a big, um, uh, like a, a landscape style poster. So like a movie poster size, but landscape, not portrait of that classic shot of Keaton in front of the Batmobile. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I also remember getting, I think it was Corgi. Um, I still have it on my shelf, but I remember we were at the shops one day and mum bought me, it was the first Batman toy I ever owned. It was the little um, die cast 89 Batmobile. Mm. And, you know, go, oh, you know, it's not open air. Like, what what is this? And then eventually I got the movie, like the the book, you know, the movie, like the making of book. Um, it was on sale at a bookstore one day and I remember sitting, it was was summer when that, when I got that, um, so it must've been late 89 or early 90. Cause I remember coming home from the shops and then sitting in my pool, like a little, little waiting pool out the back, flicking through this book and just, I mean, I didn't read a word of it. It was just the pictures. Um, and then obviously, like I said, for Christmas getting, the toys. So, I mean, I, by that stage, obviously I knew there was a movie. Um, I knew that I wasn't able to see it yet, that it was kind of, you know, for older kids. Um, but for me in 89, the Batman movie, and again, it was on TV because of, you know, the big screen Batman coming out, they replayed the Batman 66 movie prime time on a Mm. Tuesday or Wednesday night. Like it wasn't like a midday movie, like it, ended up being you know a couple of years later prime time um they played the batman 66 movie and i remember sitting up with mum taping it and that thing got because you know couldn't buy the episodes of the 66 show or yeah anything. yeah um, that thing got played on a loop um because you know there was no batman the animated series um i don't think that even released the um the filmation stuff on VHS by then that I think that more came out around Batman returns from memory. Um, yeah. All I had was that, that movie taped off TV and a couple of random episodes. Um, 
so yeah, it was it was all the toys, and I, I got a little Batman costume. And when I say costume, it was like a material smock that just you know covered my chest. It was grey, and the bat symbol on it was like as big as my chest, and a little blue cape off the bat. <laughs> that wasn't even it was like a round cape too. It was rounded. It wasn't even it didn't have like the the wings, you know, the bat wing look to it. And it was just a blue plastic mask. But I lived in that thing, um, riding my tricycle you know, pretending it was the Batmobile and I'd recite lines from, from the Batman 66 movie. And, but they, they all, they all sort of work in tandem for me because like I said, all the, all the merch I was getting for this show that I fell in love with, with, you know, campy Adam West and Burt Ward and stuff was all the black, you know, (laughs) Keaton and Mm -hmm. movie stuff and that they were the toys I was playing with. So, um, yeah, very, very fond memories because it, it it's what started it all for me. If that movie hadn't come out at that point in time and, you know, that show not being on television at that point in time, you know, I might have thought it was old or silly if I was older, but, you know, it just, it, it was it was meant to be. I was, you know, and 35 years later, here I am talking to you guys about it and, you know, it's it was, it was, I was always meant to be a Batman fan, I think. All right. So, Jamie, you're a little older than me. Brendan's a little younger. You know, I'm right there in the middle. So being a little older than me when the movie was coming out, what do you remember about, especially before it came out, like with the trailer or TV spots, like memories of that? My my memory of, you know, I was I was really into Batman, like the Dark Knight Returns. I'd just been introduced to that within a couple of years of me finding out this movie was coming out. So, you know, Dark Knight Returns came out in 86. I probably read it in, I'm going to guess, 87. And then probably, I don't know, my timeline's kind of messed up. It's been a minute. Summer of 88, I think, is when, like, the the trailer for this premiered, maybe? It it feels like it came out almost a year before the movie did. Mm, Okay. I I, I wouldn't know exactly either, because I was so young, and I... Because I was only 10, I was oblivious to all the hype around the trailer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, that much, like, I don't know if it was a full year or not, but yeah. Well, you know, time runs differently when you're younger than when you're older. Like, right. you know, the, the span of time, just it, it's weird. As you get older, time seems to move quicker. So yeah. it might have only been three months before the movie came out, for all I know. But it mm-hmm. feels like it was an entire year. And I remember my mother telling me, or asking me, we were in the car, I think. And she's like, did you know that they were making a Batman movie? And I said, what? And she's like, yeah, they're they're showing the trailer on I, maybe Entertainment Tonight or whatever it was where it debuted. And I was like, oh, wow. She's like, yeah, it'll be on tomorrow, so we'll watch it. And I was like, cool. And they showed that trailer, and I was like, my mind was blown completely. And then I feel like from that time, Number one, you couldn't go to the theater and watch a movie. And back then, I went with my dad every single Friday. And if not Friday, on Sunday. Sometimes both. And I don't believe I went to a movie from whenever that trailer debuted on that primetime news show until the week before it came out without seeing a trailer for Batman. Mm -hmm. And I was fine with that. Because it's not like I could go online and just watch it on my computer or on my phone or anything else. So that was pretty much the only way you got to see a trailer back then. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like reactions, you know, in the theater, every time that trailer played, there were always like these amazing reactions of like gasps and cheers and all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, you could just feel the snowball effect of this thing getting bigger and bigger and bigger as the time was approaching. And the conversations that you'd have with people, like just anybody, like there was a, Uh, a girl who lived behind me in my old neighborhood back then. And we would always like hang out on her back porch and stuff like me and her and her brother. And, and her mom was always like real cool with us and stuff. And she's like, at this point I'm wearing a Batman t-shirt every day, which we'll come back to that (laughs) later on. And she's like, that Batman movie's not going to do any good. I was like, what? And she says, If they would have cast Adam West to play Batman in this movie, it would have made a lot of money, but I don't think it's going to do anything because who wants to see Michael Keaton as Batman? I'm like, well, 
I think you're wrong, but we'll find out. And well, uh, we kind of know how that turned out. But uh, I mean, it just I mean, that's just it. This is a you know a middle aged woman who is not going to the comic book shop every week and not you know into geek life or anything like that. And of course, the superhero movie was something of an event at that time because this was really only the second major one. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, not counting the sequels to Superman, I guess, but <laughs> or Swamp know, Thing, <laughs> or, or Swamp Thing, yeah. Uh, so I mean. It was it was just kind of an event, and you could just feel the anticipation. The the like it was almost electrifying, and like you couldn't before the movie even came out, you couldn't go to any local shopping mall, and pretty much any store had something to do with Batman. Especially like you know, Andy, you probably know Spencer Gifts. Yeah, like the, Spencer Gifts looked like the freaking Batcave exploded in there for months on end before and after the movie came out. Mm-hmm. And they weren't the only ones like every store tried to capitalize on the amount of people walking around with the T-shirts and the earrings and the hats and the posters and, you know, all, just all that stuff. And I don't even feel like toys were a big thing for this. Like the only toys I can remember having, and I don't think I had them until after the movie was released. And I wasn't really playing with toys by that age, but I was just like, hey, it's Batman. I got to do it was Batman. Joker, and then, you know, Bob the Goon was everywhere, but I never had Bob the Goon. And then I had the the little Hot Wheels die-cast car, which for some reason had a big yellow bat oval on top of it, which I never made sense out of that. <laughs> I have that right here sitting at my That's desk. I'm staring, yeah. I'm, I'm staring at it right now. The way You know what? I mean, you're not wrong, but I kind of like the bat symbol right on top. I think it's kind yeah. of a cool, especially when you're a kid, you're like, oh, yeah, of course you want the bat symbol. So I, I don't feel like the that level of merchandising for like the toys was like huge, but like you'd go into Toys R Us and like the end caps would have all the Batman action figures on them, which was mostly Bob the Goon and like three Jokers and a Batman is pretty much what the, the whole end cap was because nobody yeah. wanted Bob the Goon. But, uh, and those were the only three in that first original line, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it and I think it was what Toy Biz was the company. Yeah, or, those maybe? those Toy yeah. Biz toys. Yeah, the, the line was pretty limited, and those were the only three characters I had them all. But uh, what's crazy is that those were the only three characters. But for Batman, there were multiple variations on his face. They had like multiple sculpts, and I don't know why. I never actually heard why, but I always liked the one I had the best. It was the roundest face because there were some faces on the the other ones that I did not like. But yeah. Batman, Joker, Bob the Goon, Batmobile, Batwing. I think there was a Joker cycle. See, I can't like, even remember seeing any of the vehicles for it. Yeah. I never, I never had them. The Batcave. There was a Batcave. But I mean, that's how Toy Biz kind of got into, you know, made, they made a name for themselves because of getting the Batman license. Because what's crazy is, to your point, there was so much hype for the film. So much. But it seemed like the merchandise was lagging. And so a lot of the merch, like the deals weren't made. And so that's how Toy Biz ended up snagging the action figure rights. And it put them on the map, but they just couldn't keep up with the demand. And that's a whole other story. But even oh, so... Toy Biz did the X-Men line back in the day. Yeah. Too, didn't they? Yeah. So and they those start... Were, those were great figures for that, I think. Yeah, they started by doing the Batman movie figures and then they decided to expand it to a DC superheroes line. And then they're like, well, then let's do it for Marvel too. Then they did the next men line. They did a Marvel superheroes line and they kind of just stayed in the comic book character action figure business for years and years. And they got better every year with every line. They did get really, really good. But the Batman ones, they're not the best, but I still love them because they were, if you were psyched about the movie, that's what you got. And I, I love those figures. I still have them all. Yeah, and they had like a gold background on the cards, I think. Yeah, yeah, everything had that gold motif to it. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, it makes sense because, I mean, the the only other big superhero movie prior to this was Superman, what, 10 years earlier, and uh, did they do any toys for that? That's true. No, that's that's a good point. Like, I mean, they didn't know what was, you know... The only other thing that I can remember in my lifetime like that, I mean, obviously Star Wars figures had been a thing, but that's a bit different, but is, um, Andy, I'm sure you'd remember this too, in 95 when Toy Story came out. Mm-hmm. They did yeah. not, they, you know, the, the amount of toys and buzz and stuff that people wanted, they were not prepared. 
I know. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to think because it's like maybe that is because Star Wars was its own thing. But even when Star Wars came out in 77, they weren't prepared for the toys. And then right. it became such a phenomenon. But if you think about like event films in the 80s, the action figure line was not a given. No, you know, you know, like if you think about like even the like Indiana Jones was huge, but I don't remember a ton of Indiana Jones toys. Um, I I had an action figure set, and I had the map room playset for Indiana okay. Jones. Okay, and again, I knew that some existed, but again, like the action figure line for an event movie became a given in the nineties. I think. Yeah, because, I feel. I think because of this. Yeah, exactly. I think it was because really of Batman. Because again, you think about these huge movies in the 80s, an action figure line was not usually part of the deal with the exception of something like Star Wars, right? Um, And then because of Batman and then the event film era of the 90s, everyone had to have one. And and that's how you got a, you know, action figure line for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and (laughs) and God knows what else, you know? Congo, right? Like, yes. um, oh so, god, they did have those. Oh, yeah, Lord. Battlefield Earth. There's an action figure line. Um, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was like, yeah, it was like the Batman Juggernaut was starting, but everyone, as far as merchandise, they, I think they waited too long. And what's crazy, as I was starting to think about this, is yes, there was Batman merchandise everywhere the summer of 1999. Everywhere, 89. I. Anyway, I don't know if I'm enunciating. Um, But what's crazy is so much of it, I would say 75% of it was not specific to the movie. It was just Batman merchandise. But most of it was like, most of it was like, it was the logo or it was the comic book comic book versions of Batman and Joker. So stuff that was specific to the movie was actually rarer than just Batman stuff. Um, And so I owned all of it. But yeah, like when I look back at all the toys I collected in 1989, so much of it was comic book Joker, comic book Batman, comic book Robin was in a bunch of the merch too, because people still thought Batman and Robin, even though he wasn't in the film. So it is crazy to think about that. Um, And what was so weird is a bunch of the merch had the Batman title block, you know, like in the same font as the movie mm-hmm. that that kind of cool blocky, but it wasn't the gold and black the way the movie was. It was like a red and a blue more like the comic book. So it was almost like a combination of the both. I, I recall that now that you're talking about it, because, you know, I, I say um, at one point and I, I don't remember, I think it was 13. It might have been 14 different Batman T-shirts. So literally I could go two weeks wearing a different Batman shirt every day. And I still can. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, I've got a whole (laughs) closet full of them, but my boss doesn't seem to like the idea of me wearing those to work anymore, even though I used to wear them to work all the time. But that's another story. Uh, I I feel like of all of those, I'm I'm just flipping back in my mind because I had favorites. I had some I liked better than others, but. I don't know if there was a single one that was actually from the movie. Yeah. Like the, the first Batman shirt I ever bought. And I think this was actually before I even knew this movie was coming or it was like right after I saw that trailer on TV. I don't remember my timeline very well for that, but mm-hmm. it was like a, a light gray t-shirt with like the, the logo that they use for the Batman 66 show where like it says Batman inside of the wings and then like his head is on top of it. Yeah. That was the first Batman shirt I ever owned. So obviously nothing to do with this movie. And like I had the the Joker shirt where he's got like his hands on the side of his head and there's just ha ha ha's all over it. Oh yeah. I had, I had that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's another one that was like a white t-shirt with a, cityscape background with the bat symbol up in it. And Batman's got like his arm, you know, the, the cow, the cape draped over his arm kind of on the lower part of his face. Like he's cu- starting to try and cover it up, but obviously it doesn't have his whole face covered up because you want to see it's Batman under there. But You know, I, I had that. I, I just, I, there were so many, I can't even remember them all. But again, as I'm going through in my head, I don't believe a single one of these 13 or 14 shirts was actually a Batman 1989 movie t-shirt. Right? Yeah. And that's just it is because anyone who had Batman art put it, slapped it on whatever they could and sold it that summer. And I 
bought it all, you know, and I didn't even yeah. care. But you're right. I had so many T-shirts and I did have one or two that were specific to the movie. There's one I remember and I posted it in the past because I still have it. And it's Jack Nicholson's Joker's face. And I think it says Batman underneath. But then on the back, it says the Joker's back. Ha 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 ha. Which is just. I don't know why it says that, but it does. Um, but it was a cool, cool shirt. And I remember that one. And then I had one that was sort of like a version of the poster that you were talking about, Brendan. But then, yeah, I had a bunch that was like one looked so almost like filmation Batman. I had an Adam West shirt. I had uh, a sweatshirt of the Joker and it looks kind of like the superpowers packaging artwork. And it was all good. As long as it was Batman or the Joker, it was free game that summer of 1989. I can go you one better. I think the first memory I have of owning a Batman t-shirt was my mum bought a black shirt and then with like cloth paint um, that I think she traced it off the long sleeve black shirt that was in my Batman costume did the Batman logo in with the yellow and black on the show. Wow. I, mean, I don't yeah. think I had one that was like official because I don't think you could get one. Yeah. I, I'm, th- I'm thinking the, the lead up to the movie, the only things that I can specifically recall. And again, my, my timeline may be messed up here that I had that were actually officially licensed to the movie stuff was the poster of him standing in front of the Batmobile. Mm-hmm. And then there was another poster that was like a Batmobile poster, but it had like the specs for the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that very distinctly. I I still had that poster hanging up in my garage before we moved into this house. So it was at the old house. So as as new as eight years ago, and I think it was just so tattered. Yeah. I think I probably threw it away when we moved out of the other house because, I mean, it was on its last leg. Like there were so many tack holes in that thing for me taking it down and rehanging it back up in different spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, that was, that was a cool poster. Cause it said like what type of engine it had and how fast it zero to 60 time was. And you know, yeah. all this stuff. like it was a, it was a really cool poster that I loved as a kid. I, since we're talking about it, I had the Batman one of him standing in front of the Batmobile, but it was, it was the portrait one. So you didn't see the whole Batmobile. Um, I had that, on one wall, my bed was in the corner. So I had it on one wall um, adjacent to my bed. And then I had the full body Jack Nicholson Joker one that was like life size. And oh, that like a door poster. Yes. And that was behind my headboard. So it was like my bed <laughs> was flanked on both walls with Batman and the Joker. But that Jack Nicholson one, I remember so distinctly because it just blew my mind that it was life size. And so I would like look at his face and go, it's like, I'm really, it's, it's like I'm right here in the room with him. <laughs> the, um, that Batman one you were just talking about, Andy is, was it the photo that I shared in real fans yesterday when I was watching the movie? Oh God. I don't know what you show. I don't know what you shared yesterday. Because I, sh- I wanted to, I wanted to share a photo of the poster that I had that showed all of the Batmobile but I couldn't find a decent enough image of it. I could only find a portrait one that showed more of Keaton cut off the Batmobile. And that's in the, pro- top, in the top right hand corner. It had like the, you know, the gold writing, you know, the Batman. Name. I mean, that's, that sounds like it. I'm trying to look and see. Yep. That's it. Yep. That cool. is it. Nice. That was the poster that was on my wall. Yeah. I, for, I, I, yeah, I had the landscape one that showed all of the Batmobile. Yes. And that was an amazing God, that's still just an amazing photo of Michael Keaton in the suit. That was the first image that was released, wasn't it? I believe so, yes. Yeah, cool. And what's so funny to me, and you said this earlier, Mm -hmm. and is that it was the first time Batman was all in black. Mm -hmm. And I was 10, so I didn't have any preconceived notions really of like, well, he shouldn't be in black. He should be, I like, I just was like, oh, okay, sure. Uh, Same thing like, they cast Michael Keaton. I was like, great, sure. You know, I, I, I never, I was too young to have much opinion about it. I was just excited there was a Batman movie. So none of that stuff even registered for me. Mm-hmm. But it is funny because I remember that being talked about with the movie of it was such a bold choice to put him in an all black suit. And it was the first time it had been done. And, <laughs> and now <laughs> that's like the only way people <laughs> imagine well, him. Didn't that start a trend though too? Yeah, all superheroes had to be in all black. And it's crazy to me that 
it's 35 years later where several franchises in and we've only ever had a gray suited Batman once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that is crazy to me. Yeah, it's, it, it is so nuts, but it's just funny you mentioned that because I was like, oh yeah, like had I been older and I was a, you know, a bigger Batman fan, I probably would have also been like, oh really? They put him in black, but just because of my age, I just was like, oh yeah, sure. It makes sense. You know, I just didn't even think twice about it, but no, I know it. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say they again, the, the internet of the day was standing at the counter at the comic book shop, talking to the, the employees and the other patrons. This was your Twitter slash Facebook slash whatever you want to call it of that time. And when you found out Michael Keaton was playing Batman, that was a hot topic of discussion for quite some time leading up to it. But I can't recall a single conversation ever taking place in the comic book shop of why the hell is he wearing all black? He should be wearing blue and gray or gray and black or something like that. I don't remember that conversation ever taking place, but I remember the Keaton conversation rather vividly on no less than four trips to the comic book shop. How funny. Yeah, well, there you go. That was that was enough to distract everyone. The thing that I fixated on more than anything, being five, was and you know from watching the Adam West show where he barely has ears on that cow at all, is these huge ears. It just for some reason, and honestly, I think that might have been part of the reason why I fell in love with the the character too. Was just the the look of the cow and those long black pointy ears. There was just something about it that just fascinated me. As a five-year-old, I can't explain it, but it was just like trying to sort of work out why the one that I watched that I loved didn't really have ears at all, but then this guy all in black had these massive ears, but holy shit, that looks awesome. And yeah, it was just so bizarre, like that that's what I fixated on. What's crazy is look at some comic books from right around that era. Look at the main Batman line around 1988, maybe 1989. His ears were twice the size of the Keaton Cowell. Yeah. They were huge. And so it's it's funny. And then if that, Kelly Jones drew him, they were like four times that size. So. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, you know, when I was in my full Batman hype in 1989 and I got those amazing three packs of comics at Toys R Us, three packs of Batman comics, that was when his, you know, his ears were at least 12 inches each, maybe that, longer. And they, were just aren't, they don't really do that. Even the more modest size ones, like they're not, not that big. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but they have certainly varied over the years. Um, but yeah, I just remember seeing that in the comics at the time and just being like, wow, yeah, those are those are even massive. So it makes the ones in the movie feel perfectly reasonable. And I still like the long years. I don't I like all of them. I don't I don't I'm one of those people. I don't have like a, a dead set preference on which way I go. I just it's like the overall aesthetic of the suits what I'm after the cow or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. So, you know, if the if the short ears look great on it, I'm all for it. If the long ears look great on it, I'm all for it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, my two favorite bat suits are 89 and Batfleck. And those are kind of two extremes as far as ear length goes. So yeah, exactly. it doesn't, yeah, it's certainly not a deal breaker for me either. Um, speaking of just the, the summer of Batman, summer of 1989. And again, for those of us who live through it, we know how fully encompassing it was it really was the the summer of batman like you could it, not escape no, it no it was madness it was everywhere <clears throat> you went like every window had something to do with batman in it. like you um, know ho- hobby shops that sold models had like their batmobile models up in the front or see, that's i never experienced that any of that God, i wish i could i mean I, yeah. I did later with with other movies but yeah, that, that's the part that I really wish I'd been a bit older for. And look, it might have been like that over here, um, but I don't think it would have been, you know, even if it was extreme over here, I don't think it would have been as extreme as, you know, what, what you guys had over there. I wish I could go back in time and and go to America for that summer. It would be... It was, it was yeah. truly amazing. And again, those who lived through it, like, it was unlike anything else. And here's... and and. Here's the crazy thing is I've seen I've seen other Batman fans fight over what was bigger Batmania 89 or the Dark Knight. They were both Batmania, but they were very different Batmania. You know, there yes. was a very different vibe. But 
So I don't want to argue like, oh, this was bigger than that, whatever. Um, but it was very different. And in 1989, you couldn't escape Batman. There were other stories happening in 2008 with with the Dark Knight, amongst <laughs> the Dark Knight. See, Summer of 89 it. was different. And again, there was, there was hype for Batman Returns. There was hype for Batman Forever. Strangely, I don't remember much hype for Batman and Robin, but... Well, it's funny you nothing, say that because nothing that's what I, was, I was about to say is my first, and this is including Batman Returns, my first real taste of like, wow, this thing is everywhere was Batman Forever. Like there was whole departments in Target that were just dedicated to Batman Forever. So um, that that's an interesting road that you're going down there because I feel like Batmania in 89 was was a whole new level of what we're talking about. I feel like Batman Returns had a lot of hype, but I don't feel like it was anywhere near that level. And I feel like Batman Forever was damn near back on 89 levels. Not quite, but I think it it was closer than Returns was. Yeah, because I felt that like it was every shop you walked into, there was something, there was cereal, there were shirts, there were toys. Like I said, Target, another uh, chain store over here, like Target, it's called Big W. Um, it everything was batman forever everything everywhere and they kind of did it again for, uh, again for begins funnily enough there was a, a lot of begins stuff everywhere back in the day too i don't remember seeing begin stuff hardly any place i went I, but i i may not have been in tune with it i feel like there was not a lot of hype for begins really we again target nah. there was a, and they very rarely but, do but it see, there was a see, I, you're, you're you're equating hype with the amount of stuff there is to buy well, yeah, but and it's not just kid, that. that's part of the hype, I guess. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> not just it's not just that. Like there was again, like in 89, it was yes, it was merchandise, but it was so much more than that. It was everyone was talking about it. You yeah, know, exactly. Just, that that was my point. You know, the conversations everywhere you went, whether it be the middle-aged woman in my backyard or the guys at the counter at the comic book shop, or or Oh, here, here's another example. I literally just had this discussion before I came downstairs because, you know, I was, I was talking to my neighbor. Now he's, uh, he's older than me. I think he's, gosh, I want to say he's probably 14 or 15 years older than me. So this would have put old. him, he, yeah, this would have <laughs> put him, you know, probably in his late twenties when Batman came out. And he was telling me that, you know, for months before the movie came out, Anytime he knew there was going to be like a, a news interview or anything like that, or if he could happen to catch a commercial, he had a six hour videotape that was just all of that stuff. Wow. Like he was telling me a story. Uh, we, we both know the guy that runs this local comic book shop here in town that I've gone to since I was a wee child. And he said he got a news interview with. So the guy that runs it now his mom and dad are the ones that started it. And he grew up in the shop with them. And he eventually took it over when they retired and or passed away. And he said that he had this tape from the local news channel where they were interviewing, you know, he was there with his mom, but he was, you know, still pretty young back then, but they were interviewing like the mom about how this Batman craze impacted the business of their, their small comic book shop. And she was kind of talking about it. And, you know, she was she was a sweet old lady. We all loved her to death. She had like this real deep Kentucky Southern accent. You couldn't find her without a cigarette between her fingers. Like she smoked in the comic book shop, which we all always <laughs> thought was kind of funny. But, you know, at, at any rate, she was real sweet. Smoke, right. <laughs> she she passed away a number of years ago. But, you know, he was talking about that because, you know, the the guy that owns the comic book shop now that was his mom he's like you know if you can find that tape i'd love to be able to double copy of it because i don't have much in the way of videotape of my mom because it wasn't like a real prevalent thing back then so just that you know the, a guy in his late 20s is taping every single news thing and interview thing that he can find that is related to this movie and you know he he's he's like us he's he's you know into the geek culture and everything he, he collects comic books and you know one of his kids is named kirby after jack kirby so like he's wow. he's into that life but again this conversation is is talking about all of these people being involved in this movie to the level that they were whether it just be you know the the comic book shop you know regulars or you know people in the neighborhood it just 
so many people were talking about this. Like my parents went and saw this movie with me no less than twice. Both of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was such a big deal. And that that's the part that I've never experienced since, whether it be The Dark Knight or, or BVS or the buildup or the success or the hype of any of those. I've never seen anything take over the landscape of pop culture in every way that it could, the way that this movie did. Mm-hmm. It was just unbelievable. That That's the part that just still to this day, 35, 36 years later, that blows my mind is nothing has captivated, at least in America that I've seen, the way that this movie did. And again, it really, I think it set the template and ushered in the era of the 90s summer event film. And, and, and therefore, that's what the sequels were. That's what Batman Returns was. That's what Batman Forever was. They were big summer event films with tons of hype and merch and all that stuff. But this kind of set that template where this movie was the movie of the summer and everyone made money off of it. And then everybody wanted to replicate that. And, you know, there have been think pieces written over the years about how Batman changed the way movies were released and promoted and merchandised. Mm-hmm. And that then again, the nineties became everyone wanted to, to replicate that no matter what it was, whether it was T2 or Robin hood or Batman forever or whatever, Jurassic park even, you know, and they is, is like, Oh no, it's not just the movie. It's all these other things as well that really all, you know, factor in it's the, the soundtrack, even though that was big in the eighties too. I'm not giving Batman the credit for that, but still like, that's just another aspect of like, well, no, you still need a soundtrack. You can sell the soundtrack too. Um, and that print soundtrack became a huge bestseller. It was the first audio tape I ever owned. Wow. Was the Batman soundtrack from Prince. I remember buying it from Kmart in Lockport, Illinois with, the, you know, the $10 I was able to scrounge together. Um, and I played it ad nauseum because number one, I was obsessed. And number two, it was the only tape I owned. So <laughs> of course I was. Um, then, you know, I replaced it a year later with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle soundtrack. And then I had two tapes to annoy everyone with. Two um, bangers there. But it was, yeah, exactly. They're both good. Um, but yeah, like that, that was another big piece. I mean, the Bat Dance music video from Prince was on constant rotation on MTV. And that video... For, the, for those of you that are iconic. too young to remember, MTV actually used to play music videos? Yeah, I didn't say it because I knew someone else would. So I know you got, I, you got it covered. But yes, like that video was like a huge thing and was always playing. And you mentioned, you know, your friend or this guy you knew who used to tape stuff just to get little bits and pieces of Batman. I used to do that, but not until Batman Returns because I was still so young when Batman came out. But people were buying VHS recordings of the trailer for twenty dollars at conventions. <laughs> that's that's a grip on pop culture there. Pop. Twenty bucks for a two minute trailer on a VHS tape. But, but you know again, what? That's the only way you could get it, or either that or sit in a movie theater all day and watch it. You know just... exactly. Back then, if that's your only option, I probably would have paid it. Exactly. That, that there was just no easy option to do this. At all. So yeah, there was just so much. I I also wanted to bring up because I have such warm memories of the Taco Bell promotion. I love those Taco Bell cups. I think they're, I mean, we all love the McDonald's stuff from Returns and Forever. We love those. Love them. But the Taco Bell cups, there was beauty in their simplicity. Each one was just a different image of Batman. Nice and simple with additional artwork. And the artwork was gorgeous. It was so cool. I had such memories of like just begging my mom to take me to Taco Bell. And even the cinnamon twist and the little Batman baggie makes me so happy. And I it was don't like, remember those. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had the cup and I remember the cup distinctly. Well, one of them. In that I, anytime I would go to a kegger in high school, everybody knew which cup was mine. Because that uh, was the Taco Bell Batman cup. Like, okay, this is Drooly's cup. Everybody just knew that was my <laughs> cup at whatever event we were at that night. Yeah. So I had that I had that cup for all the way through high school. I love it. I got mine sitting right here. I lo- they're amazing. But yeah, even then, like, again, it's so weird that this movie had so much hype, but McDonald's wasn't interested. So Taco Bell took it. 
and it was hugely successful. And so that's why the sequel McDonald's is like, well, we ain't passing up the sequel. Um, but yeah, those, those <laughs> Taco Bell. Not at all. <laughs> well, well, they still <laughs> sold it. It was fine, yeah. you know, and those cups are beautiful too. So we, whatever. We didn't even have Taco Bell over here then. So I don't remember yeah. there being any fast food tie-ins at all. But oh my God, the Taco Bell cups are amazing. I, I have all four, but even a few years ago, like the, they were in storage and I was at like a secondhand store and they had two of them, but they were in like immaculate condition and they were only like a few bucks each. And I was like, well, I'm buying them anyway, because I don't know where my other ones are and these are amazing. And so now I just have some some extras. But yeah, they were, they were so beautiful. And again, I just. I always want Taco Bell, but <laughs> in that summer, I even had ulterior motives to make sure I tried to get to Taco Bell as much as possible. Here's a complete set of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like nine cups for $60 on eBay. Eh, it's a bit much, but not horrible. It's better you know? than the $250 set that's a couple spots. Oh, up from it. wow. So, yeah, like, again, that's why I bought those two, because I want to say I paid five bucks each or something like that, where I was just like, well, I'm going to pass these up. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Taco Bell promotion also good strong memories of that god now i want to go on ebay and buy all these thanks andy thanks. anytime anytime thanks. we have one of these episodes it always leads to ebay <laughs> well i'll tell you do you know what i don't have to go to ebay for is the toy biz batmobile you don't say i don't have to i don't have to because a good friend of mine got me one for christmas and my collection is complete that's a hell of a guy there he's a you know what a good friend that guy is he got me one that was unopened only the and, and somehow the stickers still worked. I had to put the decals on myself. That's how unopened it was. And I was like, I sure hope these stickers still work because they've been in this box for 35 <laughs> years. Um, but they did. They did. So, yeah, I, it's, it is also proudly displayed. And what a gift, Jamie. What a gift. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I love it. I love it. My original. I'm jealous of that because you'd have the shields. It didn't come with the shields. It was like first run. Yeah, but didn't. That that Toy Biz eighty nine Batmobile, the plastic that went over the top of it in the box was the shields. Mm, it did not come with shields. Really? Yeah. Okay, because yeah, with mine, the packaging like it had like it was just that cheap brittle plastic, but it sat over the top of the Batmobile and it was the shields. And Dad thought it was just packaging and threw it out. Oh, I remember. The first run did not come with the shields. And I think that there was a bonus where you could like send away for them. Oh, okay. which is That sounds right. And uh, then and mine came with the shields. Yeah. Right? And then, and then later they started packaging it with it. Well, well, there you go. I don't, I don't remember. Good. Okay. So again, the, the toys <laughs> I'm very fuzzy with because I wasn't like super into toys at the time that those movies were coming out, but I don't remember anything involving the shields on the Batmobile toy until returns. Hmm. Hmm. No, mine definitely came with it. Yeah. But again, it, it was, it, it, to be in my dad's offense, it did look like packaging. Like it was just sort of that cheap, brittle plastic that you would get, you know, toys, but you still do get toys packaged in, but it was black and it sat over the top of the Batmobile. Huh? Yeah. Mine did not come with shields, but I always thought it was really weird that it clicks when you push it, but oh. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Um, but I mean, I've told the story before about how I found the she bat wing down too. <laughs> um, about how I got the bat wing at whatever Walmart or, or Kmart or something where something it was like marked down. Sale or something, wasn't yeah. It? it was like marked down for $9 and I was like, and I have $10. And I'm buying this. And you get change. <laughs> yeah. And it was, and Oh my God, I was obsessed with that thing. I ran around with it. And then I even like took like fishing line and tried to like, hang it from the my ceiling so it would look like it was flying over my bed. Nice. Yeah. I don't that one this story. That one I need to unearth, but it's around here somewhere. But I again because of the um being a, you know watching the Batman 66 movie so much, I used to because it's got the trigger underneath it like that you hold it with to fly, which was really cool. I liked right. the handle right. and the trigger. Um I used to pretend that was like the the Batzuka when I'd play Batman, like I'd get that out and pretend it was like, you know, a Batman weapon thing. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I thought. Well, any other Batwing, they've never had. I always really liked how it had like the handle on the trigger underneath it because you could. You, I thought it was better to to fly, or, you know, pretend it was flying and stuff. It was very convenient, yeah, to to hold it and fly it around. Hmm. So yeah, that was a good one. But yeah, the three figures. Here's the thing, hmm. I I think I got Joker first, and then. I got Bob at a certain point and Bob's leg would never freaking go down. It drove me crazy because he kicked and then his leg would always just stay up. Bob's um, like Jimmy looks. He does. But I remember going to Toys R Us with my, it was my babysitter at the time. Her name was B. She was super cool. And she took me to Toys R Us and they had the end cap. But at this point they had, not just the Batman movie figures, they also had now the, the first line of the DC superhero figures. And we were looking and she's like, and she's like, you can pick one out. I'll get one for you. And I was like, I'm getting the penguin. I grabbed the penguin. And then I'm looking and then I'm like, oh, and they have Batman too. And she went, okay, you can get both. And so I went, oh, I got Batman and Penguin. And yeah, so big shout out to B, B Zaragoza. What a nice babysitter because she she bought me two action figures. She didn't need to do that. And that was so nice of her. Um, Am I yeah, the that, only one when he said his babysitter's name was B immediately went to the Netflix movie, The Babysitter? Yes. <laughs> did she look oh. anything like that? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, she did not. But she was super sweet. And yeah, I just always remember that she bought me. She told me I could have one and she bought me two. Uh, and one was that Batman and I'm glad I got the one I did. Cause again, it had the better face and it also had the, the belt that also was the grappling hook. Yep. Which was, that, a little, that's the one I had. Yes. Yeah. Which was a little awkward, but you know, do what you got to do. But again, I have a lot of love for those toy biz figures, even though they weren't the best figures in the world because they were the V figures, you know, those were the ones that came out. And so if you wanted it and they had the little, <laughs> files on the back of the card that you could cut out and keep and i had all those too so yep and it was also easy to collect all for that. yes 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 well i still don't have bob the goon um i was just looking on ebay then and the cheapest is like 75 dollars with you know ridiculous postage to get it over here really and, yeah for bob the goon yep. dude i swear to you every place you went i was not exaggerating the end caps were filled with Bob the Goon. Yes, there Bob was cool. Of, there were a couple of Jokers, and if you saw a Batman, it was a, a banner day. Oh, exactly. The only time I have ever seen Bob the Goon in the flesh, or the plastic, if you will, was a shitty little comic collectible shop in Montreal in January 2014. He was He had the packaging, but it was opened. And even then, I think he was like 50 Canadian dollars or something. And I was like, oh. That's only like six bucks, dude. <laughs> not not for that. Not not for that condition. I'm not, you know, spending 50 bucks on it for, for that. But I've, I've never seen one before or since. Ever. Wow. I, I can get you a loose one pretty cheap. I'm looking right now. But <laughs> in the package, he, he, he runs a little high. In the package, you can get 50 bucks around there. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, here's one that's 40. I'm honestly surprised that they're that much. I figured I, 20, 25 would have been the high end. I am too, because because it's Bob the Goon. That action figure became a punchline for Batman fans. <laughs> yeah, because it's not like Stormtroopers where having 50 of them would be cool, you know? Exactly. Like, why couldn't I get Lawrence? Why couldn't I get Vicky Vale? <laughs> Well, if you get it, if it's when it's getting close to Christmas time, if if there is a loose one cheap, um, let me know because you're going to ship stuff over anyway. Let me know. All right, you can grab him for me. Speaking of Vicky Vale, um, <laughs> just you you, you had the white dress, didn't you? Well, no, with it was, it was, and stuff. It was a nightgown, and it I was see just the that white, the in the new run that Funk Funk are about to release of pop vinyls. Even though I have said I am not going to buy any more pop vinyls because they just take up too much space, and I'd rather action figures. They're releasing a Vicky Vale Funko Pop in the blue. I dress. know, and I'm gonna have to get her for my Burton shelf because they've never had a Vicky Vale anything. Like I know, of course I'm gonna get her. Those those 35th anniversary Funko Pops are awesome. 
And you're right. I don't need any more. I really shouldn't. But it's Batman 89. And they're so cool. The one of Batman in front of all the computers in the Batcave with the Joker on all the monitors. Oh, come on. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to let myself. I'm just going to get Vicky. But yeah, that's how can I not like she has to go on my shelf. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, so <laughs> this is a fun story. Um, I speaking of just other things, the Batman video games. So the Batman Nintendo game was awesome, but it so, was hard. Hard. <laughs> so hard. Hard, hard, so hard. Hard, hard, hard. I don't think I ever got past the second level, Um, but I didn't care. I loved it anyway because it was so damn hard. Um, But I don't think I've ever told this story and it's a little embarrassing, but it's fine. Um. We bought another Nintendo game and I I can't remember which one it was, but they had like a little survey card that was in with the Nintendo game that you could fill out and mail back, you know, where it's like, oh, how'd you like this game and blah, blah, blah. But in on that card, there was a empty spot that said like, oh, right below your idea for a video game. And I literally wrote, you should make a Batman game where you fight the Joker's goons and at the end you fight the Joker verbatim. I remember exactly what I wrote and I sent it away. And as if I was the only one in the world that would have thought you should make a Batman game. (laughs) And then they made the Batman game, but it was a different, it was a different company, but I still like wanted to believe that it was my idea. So I was like, I was like, I told them to make that. Dude, I was, I was an adult. <laughs> and if you remember, my first email to this show was, why don't they do an animated Batman 66 movie? Because the voice cast is still alive. And then a couple of years later, it happened. I still think that's because of me. Yeah, that's all you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> but. Okay, so addition- this, this is not Batman, but I have to tell this since we're talking about things. Like there used to be like before social media was a thing, like you'd have like, I don't remember what they, they weren't exact. They were kind of chat rooms, but they were more like email threads. Like in the early days of the internet. Yeah. I, I don't remember what they were called, but like you would communicate with people on there, but it wasn't like a, a, a live format, but like you could see things pop up shortly after somebody posted So it was basically what became a social media platform. Anyway, this one guy was saying, hey, there's a dude that works for Kenner that's in here. He won't reveal his identity. But, you know, if you guys want to start throwing out ideas for Star Wars toys that you want to see, he's listening. And we're all like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. So I'm like, so people start throwing out, you know, ships they want to see and all this other stuff. I'm like, they should do like diorama play sets of scenes from the movie. And they should start with the throne room battle from Return of the Jedi, where the Emperor is sitting in the chair and Vader and Luke are facing off with the lightsabers. And Ooh. son of a bitch, if eight months later, that exact thing was not sitting <laughs> on the toy shelf in the store. So, yeah, I'm taking credit for that, and I'm keeping it. So Wow. <laughs> okay, sorry, I got one more. It's not Batman, but you got me started. When I was working at Walt Disney Imagineering, I was working on Frozen for Tokyo and we had to present to the producers of the film to make sure that they were happy with what we were doing. And I was the one who had to go like get them from the lobby and walk them back to where we were doing the presentation. And I was just making chit chat and I was going uh, and I said, you know what? Like, have, has there been any talk or any thought about you guys doing like a Christmas special? How cool would it be to have a frozen Christmas special? You've already got a snowman. You've got a reindeer. And the guy brushed me off and he was like, he's like, oh, no, I don't know about that. He's like, he's like, you know, the beauty of Frozen is it gives you all those winter vibes, but it's not in any way like about a holiday or it's not it's not denominational and blah, 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 blah. So, no, I don't think we'd ever do that. Well, two years later, motherfucker, they made a Frozen Christmas special. (laughs) There's places that 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 you probably got paid for that idea. As Chris uh, for Frozen, like to do Frozen themes for Christmas. Yes, yes. And he was like, "No, no, that's not what the Frozen brand is about." Bullshit. And it, <laughs> I mean, the movie came out at Christmas time too. Like, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, back to Batman. Please don't <laughs> beat that Batman. because that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't beat that. Oh, uh, anyway, it just put up the E. 
Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, speaking of video games, though, is like I like the Nintendo game. It was hard. I, I never actually I owned it. it. I love that. I own the game. I love the game. We played it all the time at my friend's house that summer that it was out. And I distinctly recall getting to the Joker and fighting the Joker and getting unbelievably frustrated by it. And I'm not sure I ever beat Joker. Wow. I'm impressed you got there. Because again, I, all I remember is getting to Axis Chemicals. And that was, I think, the furthest I'd ever get in. Dude, we spent so much time playing that game. So That's much impressive. Time. Yeah. But I do love it. I also loved the color scheme of how he was kind of like a neon purple. Yes. And yes. many, many, many years later, yeah, NECA. Yeah. Yeah. NECA released the action figure colored like that. And I was like, that's awesome. I love that. Possibly the toughest thing with that game was being able to master like the, the little flip and sticking to the side of a wall and then flipping off of that to land somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. That was so damn hard to master that. But that's, that's when we got good is when we figured out how to do that effectively and consistently. Yep. It was all about that. I, I, the first Batman video game I had was on the Sega Master System and I had Batman Returns. And then on the Sega, I think you guys call it Sega Saturn. It was Sega Mega Drive over here. I think it was Sega Mega Drive in the rest of the world, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what you're years saying. Years later, like, I'm talking. Sega. Sega. <laughs> oh, Sega. Okay. Okay, rest of the world. You know, they, they also call it a juju bop or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ended up getting a, a video, st- actually the video store I worked at sold because PlayStation and 64 had taken over by that point. They just sold out all their um, old games really cheap. And I got the 89 game and I played it a handful of times, but I was like well into my teens at that stage. I never played the Master System one, but I did have the Sega Genesis one. Yeah, well, yeah and that's, that that's the one I that's the one I played the the Genesis one. Oh, okay. Was it the same as the Master I, System, or are you are you the Batman for you? Returns game was different from Master System to Genesis? Okay, um, okay. But I I don't know what the '89 version was compared to the like the Nintendo one. God, I, I well, know. no, not well, no, no. It was different. But like the Genesis one was quite good. But like, and that one I owned. But again, that one I never got super far on either. Um, but the other one I owned was the Game Boy. Okay, and that one I did beat. But that one had a bitch of a level where you are flying the Batwing and all of a sudden it becomes Batman Gradius where you're just shooting, shooting, shooting and dodging bullets and everything. And it was chaos and it is so hard. (laughs) Um, And what's funny is I beat it way back then, but I oh, my God, I played that. I got stuck on that Batwing level for months. It took me forever, but it was a Game Boy. So I was able to, you know keep playing on road trips or whenever I'd go visit my grandma or my uncle or whatever. Um, and then me and Joe got just recently <laughs> this past year, we got these little game boy emulators that have games from game boy, Nintendo, Genesis, super Nintendo, blah, blah, blah. And they're really cool. And that one had the Batman game boy game on. And I played through it all over again. I have not beaten it again. I'm still, I, I was able to get through the Batwing part, but I'm still like on the final cathedral level and I haven't beaten that yet, but it was so fun. And oh my God, it's like going back in time, playing an old video game and like really focusing on playing it. And I played that one so damn much and it wasn't the best game in the world, but it was the Game Boy. So you always graded on a curve anyway, but oh my God, that, that Batwing level gave me gray hair. It was the worst thing. <laughs> Does it let you save your progress? Not then, no. No, but now the that, emulator does? The, the emulator can, yeah, oh, the emulator does. Oh, so that was the... As soon as I beat that Batwing level on the emulator, I was like, save, 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 save. <laughs> on my um, Burton shelf, I've got uh, a copy of the Batman Returns um, Saturn slash Mega Drive. One that I got from like a like a really good condition one from like a garage sale, like in early 2016 or 2017 or something. Just to, I saw it and I was like, huh, and grabbed it, so... Yeah, I do have some memories of playing the games, but I don't yeah. think I play them as much as you guys. Have. I I feel like the the games, especially the Nintendo, the Genesis, and even the Game Boy, I feel like those came out significantly after the movie. Yes, 
like exactly. like a year later or may, maybe not a year because as jamie was saying time works differently when you're a kid and maybe it just felt like a year but it did not come out that summer they came out months later yeah. maybe so the, the nintendo game i would wager probably was the following year mm-hmm. and i only say that because i distinctly remember playing that game in the summer so unless it came out like a matter of weeks after the movie did it was the next year mm, interesting i mean at I least that, that's what my brain's telling me anyhow but there's no way I could have been spending as much time as I did sitting over at that dude's house playing that game. And there was like three of us there every day. There, yeah. There's no way that could have been anything but summer we were playing. That Here we go. Was the it, was re- it, was, it was released in North America on February 2nd of 1990. Huh. Okay. There so that would make sense then. Yeah, so, that experience you were talking about, Jamie, that was me with my friends in in 95 with the Batman forever game, we played that thing for hours and it was cool. Cause you had the two player. It was, you could be Batman and Robin. You know what? I got that on an emulator and I tried to play it and Oh my God, that thing sucks. <laughs> it's not great, but Oh, cool. Well, Cause they were trying to do like the mortal Kombat thing where it was like the photos yes. and which made for very clunky gameplay. And cause yeah, I, I, I tried to play that in my adult life and I'm just like, I just got frustrated. And you could, and didn't well, last you could also do like sort of the Mortal Kombat thing where you could just play two players fighting each other or you could, uh, play, or you could play, you know, the missions and stuff as well. So yeah. But yeah, we, so, we, we've spent a lot of time doing that. So since we're talking video games, here is one that I feel like I have never heard anyone talk about, but it exists. I have played it. And it's actually pretty awesome. There was a Batman arcade game in 1989. And it was never ported over to a home system. It was arcade only. But it was rad. And I've only played it because of an emulator. It was so fun. You'll have to look it up. I'm sure there's a YouTube video or something out there. But it has like, like the graphics are obviously much better than anything it would have been at home at that time. But like still very much up of the time. Oh, Henry's here. <laughs> but anyway, the arcade game, I feel like people don't people don't ever talk about. And I feel like it's one of those little kind of lost things of, of Batman 89. I have no memory of this whatsoever. Yeah, it existed and it was it was pretty damn good. No, I feel like I spent a lot of time in arcades time. during that era, too. So, well, again, I'm sure you can find it with a, a quick Google search, but I played the through our case just sucked. Yeah, well, that's true, too. Um, but I played through most of it on an emulator. Um, I think I got all the way to the Joker because arcade games are shorter. Like, um, but I feel like I never beat him because he was a bastard. Was he 14 feet tall and threw I, Thor like bolts of lightning at you? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think that was just the Nintendo. <laughs> Right? Doesn't he shoot? Didn't he shoot stuff on, on the Nintendo version? God, dude, I have PTSD from the amount of times I got zapped with his lightning. <laughs> you know, the Joker's lightning. It's my favorite thing in the movie. It's crazy too, because in the movie he's the least, you know, confrontational. <laughs> like the goons are so much more of a physical threat than the Joker. Right. Well, that, it's, it's Batman Forever one. The the end he was like the Riddler, but he was this hulked up like three D style Riddler. Yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah. I know I that that super Riddler is kind of a infamous amongst the Batman fan community. <laughs> but yeah, and then I also I know I mentioned this kind of recently. I remember I don't remember when we talked about it, but we talked about I had the movie book. Yes. And yeah, that was one I mentioned before. And I read that movie book cover to cover. And that was the one where, you know, again, whenever it came up where I was like in the movie book, they had the Ninja Star. And I think it must, it, maybe it was when me and Preston reviewed the script for 89. Um, is yes, that the Ninja? It, it was. Yeah, the Ninja Stars were in the script. They were in the book. They built them. They looked so cool. And then I just tortured myself trying to figure out where in the movie he throws a Ninja Star. And he doesn't. He doesn't. I don't know what happened to them. Um, but that's what I always remember about that book. And I also have a very distinct memory of being in an emergency room, reading that book. And I don't even remember, it must've been one of my siblings maybe was sick or something. And we had to go to the hospital, but I just remember being in the waiting room, reading my Batman book. But that book was awesome. And, and yeah, I, I read it just nonstop. 
So there were books spawned everywhere, just like everything else did out of this movie. So you had the official novelization, you had the official comic book adaption, which was one of the ones I lost in my basement flood because every time my memory photo pops up in my thing, that's one of the books I see sitting on top of that pile and it breaks my heart because that was the original copy that I bought off the shelf in 1989 when it came out. And there were like little spinoff books too, like they had uh, Tales of the Dark Knight or something like that, or Tales of the Batman. And that's the one where like, they they just had like a series of short stories that were combined into like novel format. And, you know, I talked about this before where, you know, Batman goes in and he's like needing work done on his suit and amplifying this gadget and that gadget and everything else. This is only like a short, like three or four page story. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Bruce Wayne leaves and, and the next patron comes in and he's like, okay, how can I help you? And they, they don't give like the description of who it is, but he's like, and this patron set an umbrella down on the counter and says, this button is catching on my trick umbrella or something to that effect. So like this dude was literally playing all sides of being able to make the gadgets for everybody, you know, stuff like that. So then the boom of everything from, you know, video games to books. And it was just all a part of that. I have that book too. That uh, well, and Batman yeah. one. And, well, and remember they did like the, was it the greatest Batman stories ever told was another compilation. It, it, that was a comic one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like, they were, they were like, there were novels, there were, um, all these comic compilations, just, yeah, everything to capitalize off the movie. And, and again, I bought everything I, I possibly could. I think I said it in the past is in my, you know, in my bedroom, I shared it with my brother. We both love Batman. It's some, it's one of the few things we still have in common. Um, I love, I love my brother. We just don't have a lot in common. Um, but we had these two shelves on the wall of our bedroom. And at the beginning of the summer, 1989, it had a couple Batman things on it. And over the next three months, they were overflowing with Batman stuff because I literally would just buy anything with a bat symbol on it. And there was a time and I don't remember if I've talked about this before, but my dad, you know, we lived with my mom. My mom had custody. So our dad would take us on, on weekends and my dad would take us. And this happened a couple of times. He would take us to the mall and he'd give us each like whatever, 50 bucks. And he'd be like, all right, go have fun. We'll see you back here in two hours, three hours, whatever. And that was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, my dad is the coolest. Amazing. Oh my God. And, and, you know, we were kids and you could just set us loose in them all and it was fine. And now having kids myself and looking back, I'm like, Oh, he just needed some silence. He just needed a couple hours to like of quiet. Um, but as a kid, that's like the nicest thing your parent could do for you. And we would just get go out in the mall and it was like, Oh, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? Well, this was in the era of the Warner brothers store. And this is when they were selling a Batman cowl from Batman 89. <laughs> and me and my brother had to go in halvesies to get it. I don't remember the full price, but I just remember we had to each put in money because neither of us could buy it on our own. But we bought this Batman cowl and, you know, it was just rubber. Um, but it because we shared a bedroom, it was very easy for us to to continue to share it. But I even remember then, you know, it's probably at this point, 11, maybe, maybe 12. I was going, yeah, but when I, when we move out, I'm going to have to buy that. I'm going to have to buy the other half of that cowl from him because I'm keeping it. (laughs) But we had that thing in our room the whole time, you know, we shared a room and it eventually just, you know, just sort of rotted because that's what happens to rubber masks after a certain amount of time. It just kept sagging more and more. Um, But yeah, oh my God, it was like a prized possession that me and my brother co-owned and it was the coolest thing in the world. And then years later, years, years later, he built his own Batman 89 costume. And it was very good. He did a great job. And he like upgraded his cowl. And again, this was probably, let's say 15 years ago. Um, and when he did, he sent me a new cowl that he had been using. And he's like, oh, I got a better one so you can have the old one. So he eventually gifted me a cool Batman cowl. So oh, see, nice. my brother, yeah, my brother's a nice fella. Um, 
but yeah, anyways, I just remember us going halvesies on that cow. And I remember being um, stupidly concerned about like, yeah, but you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to buy him out on this. <laughs> that was, again, that was a, t- a childhood item I always wanted because the cows and stuff that came with the, the mask that came with the kids costumes was shit. Um, and yeah, I desperately wanted a proper cow and I got one when I was 22 when I went to America and bought one from a, a like a costume shop on Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> and bought it home with me. Amazing. Well, did you see that McFarlane is coming out with a yes. replica of the 89 cowl? So of course I'm going to have to get it. Of course. And it's not um, that expensive. No, it was like a hundred, it was like a hundred bucks. So even for over here, that'd be like 200 roughly um for yeah. what it is that's that given the, the cost of those other ones that came out a few years ago i can't remember who made them but that's not too bad i mean i think we i think we bought the one from the warner brothers store back in 1990 or 91 whenever it was it was probably 70 75 because we had to go hazies on it mm-hmm. um so i mean yeah that's pretty damn good 30 years of inflation and, and to get a new one for 100 bucks is pretty damn good i don't think it's wearable i think it's just no, it's cool it's like a display piece yeah, but it but it still looks cool. But that kind of, you know, leads me to my greater point here is that in 1989, the summer of 1989, it was all about Batman, and rightfully so. And the movie lived up to the hype and it owned that summer. It was amazing. And that included the hype and the album and the music video and the video games and the toys and the and Jamie carving the symbol into the back of his head and all of those <laughs> things, right? But what I love is that because the movie is such now a landmark film that here we are 35 years later, still getting new merch constantly and not just Mm -hmm. not just every once in a while, constantly. And that is a magical thing. Like you said, the the 35th anniversary line of Funko Pups. I was like, damn them. That's really cool. (laughs) Damn them. Um, Or the freaking cow or whatever. And so that's a beauty, beautiful thing. So is here's my question now that it's been 35 years is what came out more recently Batman 89 that you were like, Oh my God, this is the coolest thing. And, and you had to get it. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I think the last thing Batman 89 I bought was the 4k uh, Blu-rays. Okay. Can't even remember the word. I'm so tired. Blu-rays, 4K that's Blu-rays. Right. Well, I know been, that that's been a couple of years. So. Yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't get in, and it's not that I don't love the stuff. You know, I I still every time I go into Target, walk down the toy aisles. It's not that I don't love that stuff. It's just I can't let myself give into the compulsory thing of starting to drop fifty bucks every time I do it, or that, more. That's very responsible of you. So, I wish I yeah. I wish I was as much of a grown up as you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am not, uh, but I, I respect that. I was going to say, but we all got a battering from a listener a few years ago. Yes, we yes. did. So we, yeah. we all got a Batman 89 battering. So, uh, I've got, I do have that, but like, yeah, even the NECA stuff, like the grapple gun, when NECA did the replica of the grapple gun, and they also did a replica of the, uh, the utility belt, which that one I have not gotten, but. I mean, I've got the gun, I've got the battering. I kind of feel like I need the belt too. But anyway, <laughs> it'll look nice. Then, yeah. then you'll have to get the car. Yeah. Then you'll have to get all kinds of other stuff. I mean, it's it's a very slippery slope, Andy. You have to be careful. Oh, indeed. Um, and the problem with that is, I have the best wife in the world who's like, "Yeah, you should have that." <laughs> that that's that's a major difference between you and me. And I adore my wife. There's no woman on earth that I hold to higher regard. But she is not an enabler when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm that, that's a major difference there. And also, I'm thinking about that cowl. I'm literally looking around my office now going, where the fuck would I put it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a lot of space well, left. Well, I have that same problem because I got that. I finally got that awesome um, McFarlane set with the six Batman starting yeah. with See, I'm, nine. God, I want that. Through Pattinson. And it's huge. It's freaking huge. It's awesome, but it's huge. It's sitting in the corner because I'm like, I don't. I haven't opened it yet because I don't know where anything's going to go. Mm. So it's just sitting over there. I'm staring at it right now. And I'm like, but it was so cool. I needed it. I just <laughs> haven't figured out what to do with the it. The last 89 thing that I wanted, it's, it's kind of two, was I wanted, I was waiting for a McFarlane figure to be released so I could get a cool, you know, modern 89 action figure. Um, 
I didn't have to worry about that because Eric sent me one um, with, I didn't even know it was coming. It just arrived in the mail one day because he, I think he told it on the last episode of the Fire Rises TM that he got a different figure because it just looked better. But the last thing that I like actually went out and hunted for was the um, Hallmark figure from last year. Yeah, that was good. And that's a cool, like, I actually, I have that on my shelf as just like a another figure because the sculpt and the likeness and stuff is actually pretty friggin' awesome. Like, it's it's great. Yeah, I same. I have it sitting on a shelf because it's too good to put in a box. Yeah, I'll like I'll take it out and hang it on the tree. You know, come November, December, but then it goes back on my shelf. I don't pack it away. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great call. That was an awesome one that came out last year. And I also another one of my favorites is diamond select came out with the statue probably at this point probably four or five years ago and it's awesome he's standing on top of one of those globes like from the city hall in the movie Mm -hmm. and he's standing on top of that and he's got his his wings out and diamond select those statues are so good and so cheap which is like really dangerous but this was one that i ordered when I was in China still and it never showed up and I got screwed basically is basically they, they never sent it. And when I tried to raise the issue and get a refund them and eBay just ghosted me and I never got my money back, but I wanted it so bad that I bought it again from a more (laughs) reputable seller. And, um, and so, yeah, I still have it, but I was like that, that one was awesome. So I paid more than I should because I bought it twice. Nice. Yeah. It's so good. I have a bust, like a statue bust that came out. I want to say like 2010-ish, um, which is just like his bust on a, he's sort of looking like he's about to throw a batarang, which is really cool, which I, I like. But yeah, I do have a Hot Toys Joker that my brother got for me for Christmas one year, but it's the um, the black and white, um, mm. chair, you know, when it, the city hall where he's just got the little pursed lips. It's that one that I have. Awesome. All right. Well, 35 years of Batman, 89. Starting back in 1989, all the way up to present day. Do you have a favorite memory or just thing that you associate with the movie that makes you just as happy as the movie itself? Jamie? My favorite overall memory of the movie is the first time that I watched it. And it's not just the experience of having watched it for the first time, given how much hype and buildup there was for it. Because Lord knows there was enough of it circulating through my 14-year-old veins at the time. But, And I've told this story before, but as a refresher, it was really special what my parents did in order for me to be able to see that movie on opening night. Because there wasn't reserved seating. There wasn't, you know, 6 p.m. shows, previews the night before. You wanted to be the first to see a movie. Your ass had to be in a seat at midnight the day that it premiered. That was the only way you could do it. Mm. And you had to wait in a line usually if, if there it was a big popular movie, which to me, this is, other than the Star Wars movies, this is the only one I could think of, you know, to that point where people were already lining up at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night to get into a midnight show. And I told my dad, well, I told my mom, I was like, the tickets go on sale at, at noon for this movie. Cause you, you know, you couldn't buy advanced tickets. It was like the day of the shows when you bought the tickets. And my mom was like, well, I have to work, but I'll come and get you at lunch and I'll drop you off at the movie theater So you can be there when the box office opens at noon to buy the tickets for the movie for us three to go see it tonight. And then I'll give you money to go see a movie that's playing there this afternoon. And you just sit there and watch the movie and I'll pick you up after work. So I saw See No Evil, Hear No Evil with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder, (laughs) which we had seen a week or two prior to that. We all went and saw it. But I saw it again because I liked it and I thought it was a good movie. So then I get home and my dad, I gosh, it probably had to have been six, seven o'clock. He's like, how soon are we going to have to get there in order to get good seats for this? I was like, well, you know, the sooner the better, because, you know, people are buying tickets and it's going to be crazy. And it's, you know, 
everybody wants to see this movie. He's like, I got an idea. So he, we all get in the car after dinner. We drive over to the movie theater. My dad asked the, the box office attendant, if we buy tickets to the last showing of the movie that's playing in the theater that Batman's playing at, can we just stay in our seats for Batman since we already have tickets? And they're like, yeah, I don't see why not. So <laughs> I saw See No Evil, Hear No Evil again that day. <laughs> And when the movie was over, you know, that the last showing ended at whatever it was, 10, 10, 30, something like that. And we just stayed in our seats. And then after the credits were done and they came in and they swept up the popcorn off the floors and everything, all of a sudden they started letting people with tickets to Batman in and people were coming in and everybody that walked by us looked at us and goes, how did they get in here already? And my dad just smiled at the whole time. And I was just like, my parents are the coolest people on earth. Was it just No, it was me and dad and mom. Your mom was that too? Cool. Awesome. Yes. So my parents facilitated me being the first ass in the seat to see the very first showing of Batman 1989 at midnight on June 23rd. So to me, that is is my absolute strongest, best, and favorite memory of this movie. Awesome. I love it. I forgot about that, but that's, yeah, that's... It's a great way to game the system. <laughs> I, I saw it. I, I don't remember. I think I saw it six times, including the very first date I ever went on with a girl was also with this movie. But th- this thing with my parents in that first showing still trumps that. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Brandon, what about you? Um, Again, it's a bit trickier for me because I didn't see the movie in 89, but that's yeah. Like, what I'm saying is like it doesn't have to be from 1989. Just I guess something related to the movie that just makes you happy. Honestly, it it's the feeling that I get, even though I didn't see the movie that year. It's the feeling that I get when I remember being five years old and discovering the character. And yes, I didn't see the movie properly until two years later, but it, to me, it's still, it's, it's, it's the reason why, and it's still interconnected and it's because all the merchandise I was getting was for the movie. Um, it, it is, it's that the year of 1989 and it's becoming a Batman fan. It, the release of this movie, even though I didn't see it is what started it all. It's the reason we're sitting here talking to you 25, sorry, 35 years later, like, it's because of that film and you know i watched it again yesterday and he wasn't there for all of it but i had henry with me for part you know for the first chunk of it when i whacked it on and he was sitting there <laughs> you know there were some parts that you know i didn't want him to see like joker you know frying the guy with the electric hand buzzer and stuff i'd be like hey hen look at this over here and i'd sort of distract him and everything but you know he was sitting there just mesmerized watching batman on the screen and he loved the stuff with the batmobile and um you know when jack nicholson was on he just said andy you'll know what i'm talking about he started singing the joker song from the batwheel soundtrack um, <laughs> and you know it's his first time seeing that that version of batman and it, I'm, I'm glad that i can pass it down you know it's mm-hmm. it, it is it, it's the it is 1989 itself and the memories that i have of that time and falling in love with this character that changed my life and, and, and getting merchandise for things for the first time, you know, like, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's always going to be a part of my life. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I, I've talked about it in the past where obviously seeing the movie for the first time with my grandma Ruth Saturday morning opening weekend was a magical thing. And I, um, one of my favorite movie going memories and my life changed that day seeing this movie. And every time it's on the big screen, I love going back and being able to see it in a dark theater again, because much like I was saying about playing the Game Boy game feels like going back in time when you're in that darkened movie theater, the lights go down and you can't see the outside world. You can almost convince yourself that you're back in the theater in 1989. Almost, you know, I can I can almost imagine my grandma Ruth sitting right there next to me. And so every time I get a chance to do that, I take advantage of it because it's always magical all over again. 
And it's hard to pick one thing. And we mentioned a lot of things in this conversation. I hope this was free form enough for you, Jamie. We, we were all over the damn place. It's given yeah. me a little, given me a little bit of agita, but you know, I'm going with it. Um, cause you know, I like, I like my organization, but that's okay. But we talked about a lot of fun things, whether it be the trailer or the games or the toys or whatever, you know, it was, and all that was fun. But I think, you know, part of the reason I, I love this movie so much and I have such a, a strong place in it or place for it in my heart is that whole summer, that whole summer, I was 10 years old. I didn't have to worry about the mortgage. I barely had to worry about, it was a summer. I didn't have to worry about homework. I didn't, you know, I was too young to care about uh, getting a date. I, all I, all I could care about was the Batman movie. And I just let it take up my entire imagination for three months in 1989. And that's why I cared about just getting anything I could with a bat symbol, reading everything I could with Batman in it, whether it be the novelization or a comic book or the movie adaptation or a choose your own adventure book that Jay Oz just posted the other day. And I was like, Oh shit, I own that. I forgot all about it. (laughs) But that summer my mental real estate was wholly devoted to Batman. And even though now we still get excited about movies and we still love movies, there's a lot of other things in your life taking your attention away from that. Cause guess what? We're grown up, So we got to deal with grown up bullshit. But when I was 10 years old in 1989, the only thing I had to care about was Batman. And that was magical unto itself. So I just think about that summer of being like, man, the only thing I cared about was where can I find another Batman thing, whatever it might be. And I still own a lot of those things. And, you know, I still and most days I'm still kind of like that. You know, I, I can't help myself because that Batman stuff brings me joy, just like this movie brings me joy. And um, I love looking back at it and just remembering what a magical summer that was back in 89. So 35 years of Batman. I didn't even watch it in in preparation for this. We just saw it with the live orchestra a couple months ago, and that was magical. Holy shit. Um, But I will revisit it this week in honor of the 35th anniversary. But this was our somewhat uh, somewhat offbeat celebration of 35 years of Batman. But it was a fun chat regardless, guys. So I'm glad uh, glad we did this. Yeah, it was a good time. It's. I know we were kind of all over the place and I kind of expected that given the format that I requested for it. But to me, this just felt like a natural conversation that you would have with other people who love this movie and, you know, no disrespect to what anybody else is doing out there. But I mean, there are dozens and dozens of other podcasts that are talking specifically about the movie or, or anything else. So, you know, this was just nice to have a, a relaxing conversation and you know some memories came back as i was hoping they were going to here and there and uh you know i i I can't speak for you guys but i got what i wanted out of this episode (laughs) well good i'm glad (laughs) all right well guys this was a blast and i do think just based on what time it is we're gonna go ahead and hold off on the wayne manor mailbox until next time but we'll be back before you know it so don't worry if anybody who's written in, don't worry. The stuff is sitting here. We'll get to it next time. If you do have something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, you can send that to holybatcast at rf4rm.com. But let's wrap up this little celebration of Batman. Go watch Batman 89 sometime this week. Listen to the soundtrack. Listen to the Prince album. Try to take yourself back to the magical summer of 1989. If you remember it, if you don't remember it, if you weren't around, just imagine what it could have been like, because guess what? It was amazing. Go to Taco Bell. Go to Taco Bell and bring your own Batman cup and fill that up with your favorite beverage. <laughs> just just pretend it's 1989. That's your homework. But uh, we are going to wrap this up again. We'll get to your emails and messages next time, but feel free to send those and we will look forward to reading those on the next episode. Uh, Jamie, I know it's late, but thank you. I am glad that we made this happen. Yeah, it was a good time getting the dynamic trio back together again. And uh, anywhere people can keep up with you or just no, no just no, check it in. It, I, <laughs> no, uh-uh, no, I'm, I'm out. That's we're, okay. we're, we're going on a very hard earned, much needed family vacation 
for 10 days next week. So I'll see y'all in a few weeks. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm nowhere to be found. Great. Love it. Uh, Brendan, thank you as well. Not a problem. Great. Again, great to have the three of us together. I know it doesn't happen enough these days. It makes me sad, but we do when we can um, anywhere that you're around outside of this. Just in Facebook and the real fans groups, mainly sometimes I go on Twitter X, but not really. Just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same. And uh, I mean, if Jamie's going off to, to Honolulu, maybe you and I can talk next week. Well, or are you maybe, gone too? Um, you gone too. Okay, Maybe he's back and forth next weekend, but we'll see what happens. All right, well, forget it. (laughs) Forget it. It's fine. All right. Well, thank you both, and thank you to everybody out there for joining us. As always, we appreciate you. Please do follow or subscribe to Holy Batcast wherever you get your podcasts. We would love that. And find Holy Batcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. If you've got something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, that email address, again, is holybatcast at rf4rm.com. Our theme music was created by the talented Gora Vekateswar. You can find his work at gvtunes.com. And don't forget to check out our sponsors over at manscaped.com. But if you're going to make a purchase, please use that promo code BATSCAPED to get 20% off and free shipping. But that will do it for this time. On behalf of Jamie and Brendan, I've been Andy. We'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. And as my plastic surgeon always said, if you gotta go, go with a smile. Holy Batcast is not affiliated with Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment. The views and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. So we had uh, 80s radio playing at work the other day uh, and Bat Dance came on. Oh, nice. And my boss Ooh. said, this is one of the worst songs ever made. Who I'm said about that? To change- I'm about to change this station because this song is so terrible. I said, if you touch that dial, you and I are going to fight. Yeah, you're <laughs> damn right. Did you give him your notice? The, the co-manager then said, this is the song they played when the Joker was dumping the money on the parade. I said, no, it is not. This song is not even featured in the movie. It's only on the soundtrack. And he's like, no, no, this is the song they played when he was dropping the money. I said, the song they played when he was dropping the money was Trust. Don't you ever question me about my knowledge of this movie again. <laughs> he's like, You're right. <laughs> what's the the line from jaws don't ever tell me about my business again <laughs> yeah <laughs>